One of the most common questions I receive through private messages and DMs is on how to study for law school. Today, I'll be showing you how to study for law school and how you can adapt my process for law school success. All of this and more coming right up. This episode is brought to you by the Lex in Motion Merch Store, where the perks and perils of being a law student through graphic tees and statement shirts help us help others more now and in the future. Even better, make a direct donation to the charities we support. Both links in the description below. Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. Today, I'm going to show you how I study for law school. Paano po ba ang aral na ginagawa nyo for law school? Step 1 is to begin by looking at your syllabus. Identify the assignment for the day. Mamburaot ka na ng bidel. In our example, let's look at my assignment from about 2 years ago in Taxation 2. In our syllabus, our professor clearly identifies three reference materials. The first would be your National Internal Revenue Code. The second is Republic Act No. 10963 and the Implementing Rules. Revenue Regulations 02-03 Our assignment here extends up to letter G of Roman numeral 1. I always begin by having all of my references together. From there, I open a new document. In my case, I use Microsoft Word. In the first line, I always write notes in Taxation 2 or whatever subject followed by the assignment number. In my case, this will be the first. So I'll write 01. Writing the subject and the number helps me keep track of the assignments when I print this out later at marami akong notes across several subjects. This helps me identify pang ilan ng document na ito at saang subject siya napapaloob. Now let's look at letter A, Nature of Estate Tax. Number 1, Definition. Later on in the recitation, sure na sure ako na ang unang itatanong ay miss so and so. Can you tell me what are estate taxes? Now, in order to answer that question, I'll have to find it through my sources, Codal, Amendment, or Revenue Regulations. Let's look at the Codal. Section 84 of the Tax Code defines estate taxes as there shall be levied, assessed, collected, and paid upon the transfer of the net estate as determined in accordance with Sections 85 and 86 of every decedent whether resident or non-resident of the Philippines, a tax based on the value of such net estate as computed in accordance with the following schedule. Right here, I have to pause because we know that the full title of the train law specifically mentions Section 84 as one of the provisions now amended. Now, let's look at the amendment under the train law. The good thing about working on a desktop is that you have a very handy search function. For Windows users, that's Control F, or for Mac users, Command plus F. Then let's type 84. Here we will find that Section 84 of the tax code should now read as Section 84 Rate of Estate Tax There shall be levied, assessed, collected, and paid upon the transfer of the net estate as determined in accordance with Section 85 and 86 of every decedent, whether resident or non-resident of the Philippines, a tax at the rate of 6% based on the value of such net estate. Let's copy that command C and paste it onto our notes. Okay pa kapatid? So far, so good. Now, let's go over that definition and break it down for our understanding. The law tells us that it is levied, assessed, collected, and paid. This tells me that it is a four-step process. The law further tells us that this four-step process is triggered. It begins upon the transfer, meaning walang estate tax hanggat walang nalilipat of the net estate. Now, isa pa sa mga prerequisite ng taxation to ay ang wills and succession. From wills, we know that the net estate is the total property of the decedent ng namatay minus 
lahat ng kanyang mga kautangan noong siya ay nabubuhay pa. The law further provides that the estate tax right here is levied, assessed, collected, and paid by both residents or non-residents of the Philippines. For me, this is a red flag. Malamang sa malamang ay maaaring itanong ito mamaya sa recitation or sa quiz. Maaaring may hypothetical na situation na may OFW daw na namatay sa Saudi, inuwi sa Pilipinas. Covered kaya siya ng estate tax. Another situation, Pilipino na permanent resident na sa US. Doon siya namatay. Ang iniwan? Bahay, kotse, investment sa isang maliit na grocery at ilang stocks ng Apple at Amazon. Liable ba siya ngayon for estate tax? Let's continue. Section 84 further provides that the estate tax is levied at 6% of the value of the net estate. Now let's go to number 2 of the syllabus. It says fixed rate. Essentially, nasagot na natin yan. Just by breaking down the definition under Section 84. Now let's update our notes. Let's write the train law now imposes a uniform rate of estate tax of 6%. Hit Control S on your keyboard or Command S on Mac to save the document. Sayang ang effort kung biglang nagbrown out. Now number three of the syllabus says accrual of estate tax versus liability for payment. Shoutout nga pala kay Attorney Babilak kasi sinulat niya na dito yung reference. Now we know that we can find the answer under Section 3 of the Revenue Regulations number 02-03. Let's copy that to our notes, Section 3. The law that governs the imposition of estate tax. It is a well-settled rule that estate taxation is governed by the statute in force at the time of death of the decedent. The estate tax accrues as of the death of the decedent and the accrual of the tax is distinct from the obligation to pay the same. Upon the death of the decedent, succession takes place and the right of the state to tax the privilege to transmit the estate vests instantly upon death. Parang nakaka-overwhelm naman yung sinabi ng BIR na yan. So let's pause for a minute and go back to our syllabus. Ano ba ang kailangan nating matutunan dito, kapatid? The syllabus says accrual of the estate tax versus liability for payment. Let's just focus on that. Accrual, big English word, the root word is accrue. Wait lang, Google natin. Accrue means to be received by someone. Kailan matatanggap? Let's break down Section 3 of the Revenue Regulations. First sentence tells us that estate taxation is governed by the statute in force at the time of death of the decedent. This means that the applicable is always the law at the time of death of the decedent. Maaaring may mabilisang tanong dito sa recitation. X died on December 31 at 11.59pm. Ano ang applicable estate tax sa kanya? This is a loaded question and now we have to go back when the train law took effect. We know that it's January 1, 2018. So kung namatay si X ng December 31 of 2017 at 11.59pm, alam natin that he will be governed by the NIRC. Sulat na lang natin yan dito sa notes natin para sure. Next sentence, estate tax accrues as of the death of the decedent. And the accrual of the tax is distinct from the obligation to pay the same. What the law now tells us that the right of the government to take a slice of the estate starts as of the death of the decedent. However, hiwalay naman ang accrual of the estate tax versus the obligation to pay the estate tax. Masyado naman din kasing karimari-marim. Kung kaka-flatline lang ng isang tao sa ICU, to ay kumakatok na ang BIR para maningil. The right of BIR to collect starts from the moment a person dies. But we are not required to pay right then and there. Next sentence of section 3 tells us, Upon the death of the decedent, succession takes place. And the right of the state to tax the privilege to transmit the estate vests 
instantly upon death. The first part is taken from Article 777 of the New Civil Code. The rights to the succession are transmitted at the moment of death. The second part tells us two things. Number one, karapatan ng estado na magpataw ng buwis. Pangalawa, estate taxes are essentially a tax on the privilege to transmit the estate. I think this second part is the heart of the number one of our assignment, the nature of estate taxes. Estate taxes are essentially a tax on the privilege to transmit what you have left behind in this world to your children and your heirs. Number four of the syllabus is in the form of a question, property tax or excise tax? Question mark. Now, this gives us a clue. Malamang sa malamang ay itatanong dito kung ang estate tax ba ay isang property tax o excise tax. Salamat sa prof ko na masipag maglagay ng reference. We now know that we can find the answer in this case in the separate opinion of Justice Bersamin in 2014. The title of the case is CIR versus Pilipina Shell. Now, let's look for that case. At this point, I know that my professor is not going to ask about the facts of the case. Ang kailangan niya dito ay alam ko dapat ang classification ng estate tax kung property tax ba siya o kung excise tax siya. Using command F on my Mac, we can look for the keywords estate tax and select the relevant paragraphs. Let's take this one. Let's copy it onto our notes, format ng maayos, at hati-hatiin na natin for easier reading and comprehension. In this paragraph, Chief Justice breaks down the kinds of taxes for us. Taxes are classified according to subject matter or object and into three groups. To wit, 1. Personal capitation or poll taxes 2. Property taxes and 3. Excise or license taxes Personal capitation or poll taxes are fixed amounts imposed upon residents or persons of a certain class without regard to their property or business. An example of which is the basic community tax. Property taxes are assessed on property or things of a certain class, whether real or personal, in proportion to their value or other reasonable method of apportionment, such as real estate tax. Excise or license taxes are imposed upon the performance of an act, the enjoyment of of a privilege, or the engaging in an occupation, profession, or business. Income tax, value-added tax, estate and donors tax fall under the third group. Based on our reading so far, Section 84 tells us that the estate tax is imposed upon the transfer of the estate. Meaning it is not imposed upon the transferor. Hindi rin siya pinapataw sa residente ng isang lugar o ng mga tao sa isang grupo o profession. So we know it is not a personal or poll tax. Second, property tax ba ang estate tax? Well, kung itatanong ito mamaya sa recitation, we have to be ready. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin kay sir na it's not a property tax, sir, because the Chief Justice says so. Let's look at the ratio legis or the reason for the law. Property taxes are imposed on property belonging to a certain class. Estate taxes are not based on some predetermined table of values from the city assessor's office. They are also not assessed in proportion to their value. They are based on a fixed rate of 6% under Section 84 of the Tax Code. So let's continue. Excise or license taxes are imposed upon the performance of an act, the enjoyment of a privilege. Let's stop there. Kakabasa lang natin yan, kapatid, that estate taxes are taxes on the privilege. Let's go back to our notes. Saan na nga ba natin ulit nabasa to? Right here on the implementing rules. Section 3 of RR number 02-03. Estate taxes are the taxes imposed. On the privilege to transmit the estate. I can continue walking you through how I do my reading assignments in law school. Kaya lang aabot na tayo ng 3 hours. I do have plans to make live streams as I give you more examples on how to read and understand the law. 
If you would like to see more of these videos in future episodes, I'll need you to pause this video and write please in the comment section below. As it happens in law school, hindi lahat ng assignment ay ganito. So let me pause here and show you my alternate methods. Here are a few tips and tricks for accomplishing your reading assignments in law school. Always be ready with your references. Salamat na lang kapatid kung ang professor mo ay tulad din ng professor ko na nagsusulat kung saan mahahanap ang mga sagot sa mga magiging tanong niya. Sa mga ganitong klase, nahihiya akong pumasok na walang alam dahil professor ko mismo ang nagsasabi kung nasaan mahahanap ang sagot. Ang tanging contribution ko lang ay magbasa. Second, the internet is your friend. If you are having trouble understanding big words, pause what you're doing and look for definitions of some words you don't understand. Walang makakaalam na hindi mo alam ang ilang English words. Mas nakakahiya kung mamaya sa klase ay tinawag ka at hindi mo ma-define ang salitang accrual. If your professor does not provide you with a detailed syllabus, you can expect that your assignment will take on two forms. One, The assignment will be based on particular pages or chapters of the book as well as all of the cases cited in the book. This is true for when the professor is also the author of the textbook you're using. Second, the assignment will be based on particular provisions or sections of the codal. Our textbooks are typically discussed per provision in order of their appearance in the law. If this is the case, what I usually do is to read the textbook with a book stand right next to my computer. I will read a page as if the page is going to be burned right after I read it. Kung alam mo sa isip mo na hinding hindi mo na mababalikan ang binasa mo, babasahin mo yan with intensity. Instead of highlighting a phrase or definition, I will quickly type it up on my notes. If I am studying without a computer, I will highlight the phrase or sentence and then I will copy it later on my yellow legal pad. Another tip is to not worry about your pace or your productivity. Huwag na huwag kang matatakot kung mabagal ka kapatid, bibilis rin ang iyong comprehension. Don't stress yourself by constantly looking at your phone, timer, or clock. Chill lang tayo kapatid. We're going with quality of understanding versus quantity of reading. Maano bang ang kaklase mo ay nakatatlong basa sa assignment nyo pero hindi naman niya kayang i-differentiate ang personal or capitation taxes sa property taxes at excise taxes. Finally, your ability to anticipate questions and possible points of focus later in the class will naturally improve over time. As a freshman in law school, you will be tempted to feel that everything, every single word of the codal, the case, and your textbook is important. Hindi ka nag-iisa kapatid, masdan mo na lang ang mga memes sa Facebook na nagbumukang coloring book ang ating mga libro. As a sophomore in law school, you will feel that highlighting, underlining, and marking your book is going to be important. It gives you the feeling na kahit papaano ay may naiintindihan ka. You would be incorrect. Our shared goal in this channel is to come to class ready for a quiz. You won't be ready for a quiz kung ang libro mo ay makulay. Kinulayan mo lang yan. Dinaanan lang ng mga mata at ang tanong, may pumasok ba? Naiintindihan mo ba? Notes matter and that's why I'm taking the time to show you mine. After you complete your assignment from letters A to G of the syllabus, you can call it a day at maligo ka na for school. However, my process does not end here. Once I have my notes, and I usually do this, either very early in the morning or during my lunch break, I will go back to my notes and edit them. I usually cut facts. Kung hindi naman importante sa klase, ang facts at doctrine lang naman ang kailangan. I also highlight my notes, add bold headings where it is needed. At this point, I take one more extra step and I think... This is when I feel I am ready for class. I go back through my notes and open my phone's audio recorder. From there, I read my notes from start to finish. I do this step for two purposes. Una, nagre-record ako ng boses ko para matiyak ko na nabasa ko lahat ng kinapipaste ko mula sa codal from the books or the cases I have read. Pwede naman kasing simbilis ka ng ninja na mag-copy-paste at wala kang maaalala dyan kung hindi mo rin naman nabasa. 
Recording my notes gives me confidence that I have read my entire notes for the day from start to finish at least once. Second, the recording of my notes gives me some form of insurance for when I have to drive to school later during the day. Lahat tayo nata-traffic your travel from your office desk to your classroom is going to take a few minutes. Swerte na kung kulang sa isang oras ang travel mo. I use my travel time to listen to my notes. I listen to my notes repeatedly. And by the time I am called to recite, I hear my voice in my head and it gives me the answers. Parang commercial lang yan ng safeguard. If I do not have the time to record, I will go to Microsoft Word, select all of my notes, right-click, select services, and then choose Add to iTunes as a spoken word track. Wait for it for a few minutes and it'll pop up as a file on your iTunes. The quality is not amazing, but it is much, much better than having nothing to listen to or review during my travel. Finally, I save my file for offline use on an iPad or print it out if the professor does not allow mobile devices inside the class. Most days, I will be sitting in class with the printout of my notes. Usually, 5 to 8 pages yan plus my notes. This, kartihan mo na lang dyan, kapatid. If I arrive in class before the time, I will usually find some quiet place to read my notes silently as I am listening to my notes on my headphones. Over the years, kapag sinasabayan ko yung boses ko sa recording, I have found that this is the most effective way for me to memorize my notes. That's it, kapatid. If you have questions on my process or you want me to clarify my steps, I will be happy to answer them in the comments below. If you have an effective system in place, please share them in the comments down below. Second, maraming maraming salamat sa mga bumili ng shirt sa merch store this week. 100% of the proceeds will go to Grace to be Born for our outreach activity tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Karma and I will see you next Friday.